my boy Young on the beat. fight you have to have the will and that's the an answer for some of y'all what, what I mean I'm a solitaire you're the only one in your family that thinks like you act like you and look like you it is so much bigger than just your space of time it's about the generations it's about your family it's about the purpose and it's about your bloodline so I'm gonna encourage you that you have to have the will to fight say this I will fight and when I say will, and having the will to fight, a will is a strong desire and determination. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Come on, wherever you at, young people, put your hands together right now. Come on, put your hands together. Praise God, praise God. Listen, y'all, God is going to do amazing things in your life, students. I'm going to say it again. God is going to do amazing things in your life. Notice I didn't say average. What God wants to give you during these next couple of days he wants to give you power, he wants to give you strategy, and he wants to give you clear direction on what your next step will be and what your customized next step. And may not be your friend's next step, and may not be the next step that you're used to taking, but God has a next step for you. Right now in the YouTube chat, go ahead and type right now, God has a next step for me. Come on, our youth workers are waiting, we're seeing you right now. Go ahead and type, God has a next step for me. Let's pray right now. Father, I just thank you for every student right now who's dialed in, locked in right now to Epic Conference, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that teenagers around the world are experiencing power in you, God, in Christ. I thank you, Lord God, that there's nothing missing, nothing broken in their life. We thank you, Lord God, for every speaker, the anointing that's on their life, every act, come on, every godly entertainment moment, every moment, God, where we experience your grace and we experience your presence in a virtual way. Father, we already know that this is unordinary. We already know that this is unorthodox. God, but you have a PhD, you major, you don't need a degree. You are phenomenal at doing things that's never been done before. So God, right now we pull on your anointing. Come on students, we pull on your power right now. We pull on what you wanna do in a young person's life. So right now in advance, Father God, where we are as a young person, we give you praise. Even if mom, we're using mama's phone, we give you praise. If it's on the television screen and we're in the living room on the smart TV, come on, we give you praise. We give you praise in advance because God, you're still the God of a debt-free education. God, God, you're still the God of healing. You're still the God of transportation. You're still the God of our hearts. And you don't see man the way we see man. You look at the heart. Man looks at the outward appearance. So Father, whatever's going on outside of us, whatever this week was like, whatever was going on in our world, whatever we saw in the news, whatever the crazy leaders are making in society, whatever crazy decisions they're making, God, we thank you right now that you see young people. You see this generation, and this generation will experience power and they'll experience glory. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Well, greetings from our church, Right Direction Church International. I'm Pastor Chandler. I have the privilege to be the host of the greatest conference in the world, filled with the greatest students in the world, all the epic students. I know we have some guests on there right now, but if you're an epic student and you've been locked in with us or an epic global student, go ahead right now and put a thumbs up wherever you're at, chat, Share this link with someone so someone else can be blessed. All right, amen, amen. And if you're a first time guest, if it's your first time ever being a part of our youth ministry or a youth group in any way, but you decided to click this link because it was shared with you, I want you to let us know and say, first time, just type first time, first time, first time, first time. And one of our youth workers will tag you and find a way to connect with you on social media. Follow us on social media at the RDCI Epic. And then check this out. Go to epicconference.info for all your latest updates and schedule updates to what we're gonna be doing 
during this conference, okay? Amen. Now listen, before we start, I want to give you an opportunity to sow a seed. I've been praying about Epic Conference. I've been praying about what students should be, do. And I know we have slates, and I know we're going to have reminders for you, and you're going to see them on the screen, but I want to encourage you to give. The reason why I want to encourage you to give at the start of this conference because it's something called a first fruit seed. Now, this is not theolo completely theologically correct the way I'm going to pitch it to you. But as a young person, what I want you to do is hear God now, not later. I'm going to say it again. Hear God now, not later. The Bible says faith is now the substance of things hoped for. So what I want you to do is sit your heart on Malachi 3 and 10. Bring the whole tithe to the storehouse. What would happen right now if you are obedient now, not later? What if you just trusted God with the information that you see right now that you're going to sow into this conference? Registration was free. And when I say sow, not all you young people are church kids. So when I sow, I mean be generous. I mean say, you know what? I believe in what they're doing. I believe in the inspiration and the motivation and the spiritual needs that they're providing for young people. And I want to give. You might be a parent right now and you're hearing me right now in your kitchen or a youth worker and you're logged in right now or you just passed by this link. If you, be link, if you believe in supporting great stuff, support the good news of Epic Student Ministries. You can give right now by going to rightdirection.info uh, forward slash give. Uh, you can see the text to give slate right there and you can give right now. Listen, I want to pray for your seed. God, I thank you that you love them and they're obedient now. I thank you that you give seed to the sower and to that student who is activating their faith now in giving. You're going to enlarge their territory in Jesus' name. Now, students, as you can see, I am excited. I am excited. Tremendously excited to have the privilege to open up this conference. Listen, every generation should experience power. Type that right now. Every generation should experience power. Come on, live studio audience. Say it. Every generation should experience power. Come on. We should experience power. Now, that sounds like entitlement. Like, how dare you act like you should experience the same power that uh, we saw in the Bible? How dare you act like God can still do those things? How dare we raise up generations and students who can uh, uh, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover? How, how dare we stretch our faith to that subject? Let's, let's, let's talk about it real quick. Let's talk about why we have that type of faith. So as we look at God and what he was saying to us during this time and why we're bringing this message of hope to you is I'm up here to let you know that you don't have to say, oh, God's just the God of my grandma, that God's just the God of my great, great granddad, or God's the God of the, only the pastors know how to pray like that. Only my mama knows how to pray. No, that's not true. And what I want you to do right now is use your phone to take notes. If you're on social media, I need you to help spread the good news of what we're going to do. And I want you to embrace the fullness of what God wants to say to you during this time. And then we're going to celebrate together. We're going to celebrate throughout the whole conference. We got a music video that's being released. There's a new song that's being released. And there's some other perks along the way. So you want to pay attention. Every generation should experience power. Joshua 4, that's what it says. In Joshua chapter 4, it talks about a whole nation. A whole, whole group of people, we're talking about millions of people, crossing over the Red Sea and then now crossing over the Jordan. Now, what we have to look at the scriptures, young people, I'm going to try to give it to you the way God gave it to me on your level. But when I look at the scripture, God was doing something again with his same people. So God wasn't just God of Moses. He wanted to be the God of Joshua. God's not just the God of Abraham. He wanted to be the God of Isaac. And God's not just the God of your mama. Someone say, your mama. I dare you to type your mama. Someone going, God's not just the God of your mama. He wants to be the God of your life too. And so in Joshua 4 and 4, it says, when the whole nation, uh, 1 through 3, message translation, it says, when the whole nation was finally across, God spoke to Joshua and he said this to him. Select 12 men from the people of man from each tribe and tell them from right here, the middle of the Jordan, where the feet of the priests are standing for him, take 12 stones. Take 12 stones, carry them across with you, and set them down in the place where you camp tonight. So Joshua, he called the 12 men students. He selected them from the people of Israel, for one for each tribe, which was 12 tribes of God's people during that time. He directed them to cross the Jordan and place in front of the chest of God, chest of God your God. Each had a stone on their shoulder. They were completely obedient. Uh-oh, tight right now, completely obedient. Completely obedient. Write that down. Say that in your notes. They were completely obedient. And what did they do? They grabbed the stones and they made a memorial for the, for, the, for the people of Israel. Now let's look at this. Why did God ask his people to do this? Why did God command Joshua to tell this generation, this new generation, 
on this level of obedience. Why, why, why did God desire Joshua to tell the priest to follow his lead like this? This is what it says. And the Living Translate says, when all the people were safely across, the Lord said to Joshua, tell the 12 men chosen for a special task, one from each tribe, each to take a stone from where the priests are standing in the middle of the Jordan and to carry them out and pile them up as a monument at the place where you camp the night. So Joshua was obedient completely, right? He was completely obedient. Now let's drop down real quick. The verse 21, Joshua explained again the purpose. It says the purpose of the stones is in the future. Type in the futuro. In la futuro. Y'all remember in la futuro? In la futuro. If you go on YouTube, you might see it out there. In the future, students. And he said, when your children ask, when your children ask, why are these stones here? What does this mean, mom and dad? You are going to tell them this. These stones are a reminder of this amazing miracle that the nation of Israel crossed the Jordan River on dry ground. Tight right now, God wants to do it again too. Now, I know you hear your mama praise God all the time and you like to relax. I know you might hear your parents praise God. I know you might have seen videos on YouTube with old people shouting and the wig falling off. And you might think praise has to do with being older. You might think um, giving God worship and giving God glory has to do with, well, when I get older, I'll do that type of stuff. But God cared so much, not just about older people, but he cared about younger people that he wanted something visual. He wanted something visual, young people, to aid them to trust God that he can do it too again. Someone say, God can do it again too. Come on, God can do it again too. So why this gen generation? Why does God want to do something again with your life? I mean, you're not trying to be a preacher. I mean, you're not trying to uh, potentially be work in, uh, on, on, and travel the world and say, I want to get thousands of souls saved in China and India. But you mean God can use me in a sport? You mean God wants me to be a visual sign of his glory? That God wants me to be a carrier as a young person of the power of God? Why this generation? Here, here it is. Write this down. Because God makes all things new. Do you know, as much as God loves me, as much as God uses your mom, uses other people, I believe God's using me right now. God, I hope you're using me, Jesus. Um, as much as God loves us, he gets bored and wants to do new things. And he always is looking for faith in the earth to perform something new, to for, perform something that surpasses what you can ask or think. I don't know about you, but it wasn't that many preachers praying that Kanye West would get saved. It wasn't that many people hoping that a pastor could buy a humongous uh, civic center and, and, and call it Lakewood Church. It, it wasn't that many people who were looking to do this. Uh, what I'm saying is God likes to have fun with your life and do something extraordinary. And I believe your generation is now, not next. I believe right now God wants to look at someone who comes from a background that you don't have everything you have. You don't have everything you need. And God said, I want to step into your life, young person, and be everything you need. Isaiah 43 and 18 proves that God does not want to be bored. This is what it says. But forget all that. Wait, whoa. Isaiah 43 and 18, God, what did you say? Forget all that? Wait, you talking about forget the stuff you did? Now, God, we still praise you for it. Now, God, we still worship you for it. But Isaiah 43 and 18, New Living Translation teenager says, forget all that. Wait, no, 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 no. You're not going to tell me to forget everything that God's already done. Like, God's like, oh, by the way, I'm God telling you to forget. I need you to forget all that. It's nothing compared to what I'm about to do. It says it's nothing compared to what I am going to do. I'm going to say it again so you can praise God on YouTube right now. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. So you thought that I needed a stadium to make you a pro professional athlete. Oh, you thought that I needed COVID not to exist to make you a millionaire. Oh, you thought that you needed a system to be okay. Oh, you thought you need stimulus checks. Oh, you think that I can't provide food on your table if grocery stores close down. God said, forget all that. I can do a powerful thing with your life without you having what everyone else says. These are the gadgets that you must use. So I want you to give God praise for that right now, wherever you're at, including the live studio audience. Give God praise for that right now. Listen, Isaiah 43 and 19 says this, for I am about to do something new, young people. See, I've already begun. Don't you see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. What if God does something spectacular during these times where everyone else is freaking out, when everyone else is giving up hope, when everyone else is losing their attention on hope, what if God says, I want you to be a beacon of light? 
What if God says, I want you as a young person to change the game? While everyone else is stalling and is in fear, I'm going to give you the next app for the iPhone. I'm going to give you the next beat for the new music industry. I'm going to give you the next update for the, the, to change the way politics are done. God's saying, I can shift things. Um, how many of you young people heard of MySpace? Exactly. None of you young people, I grew up in a generation of MySpace. I mean, we had to have coding, we had to like make everything. There was people who made a living decorating and designing MySpace. I mean, it was a big deal. When I had MySpace, a MySpace account, go ahead and Google young people what MySpace is. When you leave the screen, make sure you come back. Um, when I had a MySpace account, I thought it was everything. I, I was a Christian rapper, I had my music on there, I was blowing up, but then all of a sudden there was a shift. There was a shift, and the tool that I depended on to be successful as a recording artist no longer was there. There was a shift, there was a new platform, and, and, and it's almost like everyone forgot about MySpace. Now, I don't know if MySpace still exists, I think I see somebody typing it still exists right now, but I want you to know right now that everyone is on Snapchat and Instagram and everyone is using other things, but God is saying, I can do something with a forget all that. I can use your life even if people are in it. Forget all that. So check this out. I, God is saying, I still want you informed. I still want you educated even if the education system doesn't know what to do. I still want to make you a brilliant critical thinker. I still want to use your mind to change the world even if teachers won't show up to teach. So what we have to do as a generation, what you have to do as young people is put your mind up at God. Another scripture. Someone type, every generation should experience power. Come on, everyone say it. Every generation should experience power. Every generation should experience power. Uh, Revelation 21.5 says this. And the one sitting on the throne said, look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, write this down, for I tell you, it's trustworthy and true. I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss out because I'm stuck on the old Jesus. I don't want to miss out as a young person, as a leader, because I'm stuck on what God used to do. And God will receive the praise and he will receive the worship. But I want to know right now if there's young people on this screen who are willing to praise God for their future. I know you're glad that God kept you and those things are great. We should run around churches and run around our neighborhoods and type in our, write in our diaries and type in our phones. God, I thank you that you kept me alive another day. But I want to know if there's a praise that said, God, I wonder why you kept me alive another day. And I want to praise God because I'm still here. Isaiah 65 and 17 says this, teens. Look, I'm creating a new heaven and a new earth and no one will even think about the old ones anymore. God specializes with that little men in black thing that goes, hey, look at this. Woo! God looked at your sin and said, Ding -ding! and it, you thought it would flip towards you, but it was flipped towards him. He doesn't see you the way you see yourself. I know that happened to you in the country. I know that happened to you in your bloodline. I know that family member knows all your business, but God is saying that I had the thing turned towards me and you thought I was going to brainwash you, but I'm brainwashing myself. And God's saying right now, I'm prophesying to you, teenager. Let me tell you what prophecy is. Prophecy is speaking those things that be not as though they are. So whatever I say, you don't got to look around for proof. Look into your destiny for proof. I am saying you're the head and you're not the tail. I don't care if you live in the lowest part of the city of Columbia, Atlanta, wherever you're watching from right now. I am saying right now you are above, not beneath. I don't care if you feel like you're beneath everything and there's no food in your refrigerator. Prophecy, young people, is when you use your mouth with the power of God to speak something that does not exist yet because it exists in you. Type right now, it exists in me. Come on. Come on. Type right now, it exists in me. Say it right now. Say it exists in me. It exists in me. And it's not here, and it's not out here yet, but it's in here. And God's saying, I want to do something new. I want to do something new in your life. So what is a generation? A generation, y'all, is a time lapse of about 30 years. Some say even 40 years. 20 to 30 years. And I'm going to talk to you about some generations real quick. It was the, uh, uh, the silent generation. These are anybody who's in the earth right now between the age 74 and 91. You got the boomers. That's 55 to 73 young people. You have Generation X. That's 39 to uh, 54. You got millennials. And that's 22 to 54. I mean, I'm mean, sorry. That's uh, 23 to 38. And you have Generation Z. And that's from anybody who's in the earth right now who's seven years old up into 22, year old, 22 years old. And y'all are Generation Z. That's who we're targeting right now. 
And we want to tell you right now, you think you have all the time in the world to step in this game and shoot a three-pointer. But God is saying right now, I'm, I, I, I know we got the legends. He said, I already have those. I'm looking for some new MVPs. I already got the Hall of Fame. I already got those who've done things. Right now, type your, your favorite uh, classic uh, legacy basketball player. Type it right now. Type it right now. Uh, whether it's, what, uh, who, who is it? Who is it? Who y'all type? Michael Jordan? Go. Who else are you typing? Come on. Who else? Who, who else? Who else? Come on. Patrick Ewing? Who else? Uh, Magic Johnson? Who else? Who, 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 who else? Who, who else? Okay, so, so God said, I have those. But I'm looking for an MVP. I'm looking for a student who could be an all-star during COVID-19. I'm looking for a teenager who can make money through Bitcoin. I'm looking for a young person who can invent the next cash app. I'm looking for a young person who's not waiting on Bill Gates. Bill Gates, you dope, but I'm Chandler Bailey. I'm looking for a young person who can step in and say, Instagram, you're dope, but I'm about to create a new platform. I, God is saying, if you will use what you have, you will be that generation that will experience power. I gave you these stones. These are just signs. Uh, Instagram is just a sign that I'm doing something new in the earth. YouTube is just a sign that I'm doing something new in the earth. Uh, technology is just a sign. You can speak to your phone and Siri will respond to your word. The Holy Spirit is like, if you would speak to me the way you speak to Siri. Some of you young people are talking to technology more than you talk to your God. And that's why God said, I'll go into technology because I love you that much. You're making it difficult for me to reach you. But God said, if you will believe in me the way you be on YouTube. God's saying this right now, don't you know I'm near? That's why church is coming to you wherever you go. They unclosed the church, y'all. People ain't having church because we're trying to keep people safe. But God said, I'm going to bring the church to you. And you're in your room, that same room that you have that addiction in. That same room that you gossip on the phone with other people in. That same room that you accidentally go to that website when you get bored. And God said, I'm in that same place where you do all that dirt. Think all those dirty thoughts. Have all those dark dreams. But I'm being light inside your space right now. God said, I love you that much and I want to use you. Someone type. Every generation should experience power. Every generation should experience power. And so there's millennials and Generation Z. But I want to focus on Generation Z with the time I have. I want to focus on your generation, and I want you to have the faith. What is the goal of this sermon? The goal of this sermon is that you have the faith to hear everything that's going to be said after me. So that you can really lock in. Because every message that's going to be spoken to you, young person, during these next two days is going to be very critical and tactical and formulated for you. Everything is going to make sense to you, and you're going to understand why we're talking to you like you did nothing wrong. Because God is saying, I want to celebrate your future more than you're more concerned than your past. So this is what God is saying to you right now. Generation Z, God's saying this, I love diversity. My second point, God desires diversity. Well, PC, how can God use me? I mean, my whole life in my home is usually focused on what my parents are believing God for. My whole life is usually focused on older people. Like, I have to be responsible for this. I answer to older people. And you're telling me that God wants to use me now? Like, most of my prayer list has to do with making mama happy. <laughs> most of my prayer list has to do with making sure I don't do not wrong, get in trouble in my house, or, get, or, or do this or do that. My whole life is about older people. But God is saying, I am a God that wants to use you. And God desires diversity. Write this down, young people. Why does God desire diversity? We see indifferences, but God sees diversity. See, we see, oh, that's why we classify everything. Silent generation, baby boomer, boomers, generation X, uh, millennials, generation Z. That's what we do. But what God sees is next is now. He didn't call the generations that. We do that so we can calculate things, because that's what human minds want to do. We want to be in control of everything. But God sees you as you're now relative and relevant in the earth. And I want to use you to change the world. I don't think it was a coincidence. I was looking at the World Health on news when this COVID first started happening. And the lady, I can't remember her name, but she said this and this stuck out to me. She said, we need the millennials to think of new ways to help. We need the next generation to think now on what to do as we face this virus. And it stood out to me that there's a calling of hope that Microsoft may not exist one day, that, that Facebook might be ir irrelevant. But God is saying, what is in you? What is in your generation? What does God want to do through y'all to change the way life can be done at an instant? As once you open up your heart and open up your faith that God could do something in you. So we're all created in the image of God, first of all. Let's fo focus there. So why can I experience power, young person? Because you're created in the image of God. And we're image bearers. And we're all made to reflect the Lord. So if we're all created equally 
and God, we're all created in the equality, in the image of God, then we're redeemed and we're image bearers. So if you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you're a young person on here watching that's following Jesus, you're an image bearer of God. That's why the Bible tells us that we shouldn't act like this and we shouldn't do this and we shouldn't do that because we're in his image, young people. Now, for someone watching and you're far from God and you don't know what we're talking about, but you're tuned in because you're like, this is good. This is powerful. And I believe in what they're saying. We're going to make sure you have an opportunity right now to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I heard you, God. He said, don't plan it right now. Repeat after me. If you want to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior right now, I want to show you how God operates. He always operates in a plan without being, it being planned. I want you to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, come on. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I ask you, come on, say it, for forgiveness for my wrongs, my mistakes, and the negativities in my life. I receive you, Lord, as my Lord and Savior, and I embrace my a relationship with the Heavenly Father in Jesus' name. If you said that and you repeated that, no matter how fast I was going, and you repeated that, you are saved. I want you to type right now. We're going to celebrate you. You are saved right now at a random moment. You see that? What did I do? I switched up where something normally is done. That's what God is doing in your generation. There's no such thing as the same normal. God is shifting things and getting things ready. Listen, Uber was already ready. Uber Eats was already ready. They were ready. They were ready for a pandemic. Dom Domino's Pizza went up. Uh, Papa John's went up. Everybody else is complaining. There's some businesses that are booming. And God wants to set you up to be a child of God that booms when everyone else complains. But the only way you can do that, young person, is to embrace what God wants to do through you. Someone type, God wants to do something through me. God wants to do something through me. Genesis 1 and 27 says this. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. I want you to see that. So to my ladies out here and my fellas who don't know how to treat ladies right, and my ladies who think every man's out to get them and hurt them, that's not what we as believers should be acting like. Y'all the generation that changed the subject. Y'all the generation that changed the subject. Right now the subject is Black Lives Matter, but I prophesy. Y'all are the generation that changed the subject. We may not be ready to live up to all lives matter, but you all could be the generation that could truly stand under the banner and say all lives matter. But I'm telling you right now, God wants to release you to change the subject. The scripture says in Genesis 1 and 27 that, he, that they both were created in his image, but that he classified them as male and female, but not one, neither one was lower. He said they both are image bearers. And to my students right now who have white friends and you have not been communicating with them like the Lord been leading you to and loving them, God's saying they're image bearers. To my white students who you love God but you're nervous right now and you don't know where to start and how to pick up the phone and how to contact people during times like this because you're watching too much of the news. God is saying they're an image bearer. And as image bearers of God's students, we're designed to be beacons of hope and beacons of light. So when darkness shows up, we don't get scared of racism because we're not racist. We don't get scared of sexism because we're not sexist. We don't get scared of these things that's happening in the world. We stand up and we, it's time for us to shine and show the world how they should take and what way they should take. Psalms 139, 13 says this, students. It says, you made all the, the, the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. It doesn't even say complete. It says complex. Okay, so you think you're just a basketball player. You think you're just a football player. I tell students all the time, you play that, but stop thinking that's all you are. Oh, you think you're just a hip hop artist. Oh, you think you're just this and you're just that. God said you're complex. And how can I as a student PC get to know everything God placed in me? You get to know everything God placed in you by getting to know God and getting to know the God in you. And it says, you're wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. So God wants to do something powerful in your life. God wants to do something powerful in your life. Now, how many of y'all have seen a rainbow? And no, I'm not talking about that rainbow. I'm talking about the rainbow in the sky. I know you've seen that rainbow too. But how many of y'all have seen a rainbow in the sky after a storm? Y'all seen a rainbow? Well, let me tell you this real quick. 
What makes a rainbow is a rainbow, it's not one color, it's the multiple colors. We know that already, right? What makes a rainbow so beautiful is the colors. You ready for this? Let's go different. What makes a vacation so awesome? The change of scenery. What makes vision so precious is the dynamics that make up the eye. You know, it talks about the dynamics of the eye. Let me go scientific for you students since you're not in school right now, we're gonna have a little class. It says this, it says the cone of the eye enables the eye to distinguish approximately 100 shades. The average human combines those exponentially and is able to see about 1 million shades. Evidence suggests that some people have four types of cones in their eye. It includes an additional orange one and are able to see up to 100 million shades. And we fighting over two colors? Your eye is designed to see multiple shades and multiple colors up to all, close to 100 million. And we fighting over black and white people? Listen, I'm asking you, I'm asking your generation, don't be like us. Don't be that petty. Change the game, change the subject. Change the system, break it up. Make people try to figure out what's going on with this generation. They're a different type of American. I'm just talking to the epic students, students who want to experience power in Christ. I, I need you to be the new American, the American that God is calling you to be, the American that God is calling you to rise up to be. And God is saying right now, your eyes, even your eyes were designed to see complexities and diversity, and we're fighting over one or two issues. We're fighting with the Democrats and Republicans, and we're arguing about this and that and lifestyle issues. And God is saying, I created you to be diverse. Now you see why all, we're, we're all created different. We're not all created different just to be different. We're all created different because we're image bearers of God. And if we're image bearers of God, that means God created us from his eye. He created us from his cones and his eye, which means God created us from within he, how he saw creation. And if he created us students from within how he saw creation, that's why we're so diverse. That's why there's Asians and Latinos and black people and Russians and Australians and, 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 and somebody could be white, but there's 20 different accents and they still look white. And someone could be black and there's 50 different black accents, but they all look black. And someone could be Asian, but they're not Japanese. I'm Korean. Everyone's different. Why? Because God created us from the diversity that's inside him himself and for you all to be the generation to experience power you got to let go of the petty issues you see us see us act like and for some of you seen your parents fight about God wants you to be the child of God that changes the subject God wants you to be the young person that changes the subject What's the subject? The subject of this issue that we keep talking about over and over and over and over and over. And while we're talking about it, God is raising you up to be the solution. And that's what I prophesy and declare. David writes in Psalm 17 and 8, keep me as the apple uh -oh, of your eye. Hold me in the shadow, we saw my shades, shadow of your wing. Zechariah 2 and 8 says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, after the glory sent me to the nations who planted you, for he who touches you touches the apple of his eyes. God saying, I intentionally created you with that curl sticking up PC so that when you preach to the teenagers and you wiggle your head, it'll wiggle with you. God is saying, I intentionally created you with the dreadlocks. I intentionally created you with the way you communicate and being in the South and you like talk like you got cornbread in your mouth. I, I, I intentionally created you to be from the A and you talk like this when you walk along with someone. I, I intentionally created you to be in Europe and you'd be like, oh my God. God's saying, I created you to be you so other people can be changed by your life because every generation, come on, should experience what? Power. And there's diversity in God. So you're so important. God was so intentional with you. Don't you sit there and look at that same Instagram page over and over and over and over and over and over again and keep trying to change your hair to be like her? What you doing? It's not wrong to be motivated and inspired by other people, but you better aspire to be yourself. And you need to learn the difference between being a fan and a follower. The Bible says, follow me as I follow Christ. It didn't say be a fan of me. And some of you all are following things that you should just be a fan of. I like that person, they're dope, but I ain't following you. I'm following Jesus. I'm following what God placed in me. That's dope, I like the art, you're gifted, I'm a fan, but I'm not following you. And I'm not gonna name your artist. 
And I'm not going to name what you've been following, but God's saying, can you just follow me right now? Can you pause from following every trend, everything that's going on, every hashtag as a young person, and can you just simply follow me? Can you follow me? And I'm going to say this to you real quick. Well, well, PC, how can God use me to experience this power? Why am I called to change the subject? Why am I called to make this shift and adjustment in culture? Why are you encouraging me to actually be like a Gandhi and a Martin Luther King and a Muhammad Ali? And, 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 be, and why are you calling me to be like, like, that, like, like Nelson Mandela? And what are you, I'm not a Rosa Parks. And, 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 and God's saying, but you are. There's something in you that your life's calling is to change something in society. Everyone has a mark to make. Write that down. Everyone has the mark to make it. My question to you is when my children read about you. I have a baby that's going to be born in a couple weeks. And I, and I, and I declare in the name of Jesus, there'll be someone from Generation Z that my son will be able to read about that changed something in society. Come on, man. We create planes. We create light bulbs. And we have a generation who can't solve racism. We have a generation who can't, can't solve these things. We created planes. We created all these things. Rise up. Do something different. God's trying to create something new. Listen to our old information, but don't follow it. God wants to do something different with you. If Rosa Park followed her old information, somebody would have told her, you better get up at that seat. Didn't your grandpappy tell you? When they tell you to get about that seat, you get about that seat. But something in her told her in that moment. Something of power said, I'm going to do something new. I'm going to change the subject. Versus the subject being about all the people of color get out the seat when someone who's lighter tells them to, I'm going to make the subject about I'm going to stay in my seat. Something told her to change the subject. There was a young man named Martin Luther King, and everybody said that, hey, look, we can't vote. You ain't going to be able to vote because of the color of your skin. You're not going to be able to do this because you come from this side of town. Y'all got to stay over there, and y'all got to do this, and you better watch out because something can happen if you don't. But he felt that his life calling was to change the subject. And this is even after he was educated and after he went to schooling. Listen, young people, life is bigger than you going to your favorite school. Life is bigger than you just trying to go pro. If you want to be an epic student, an experienced empowering Christ student, God wants to use those things so you can make a mark in society. And God is saying every generation should experience power. I want to leave you with this final point. You're going to have to trust God because everything I say to you sounds super big. Super big, but that's why you have a super Jesus living on the inside of you. This is the message you need to hear. What you want me to do, come up here and tell you a lie? Sometimes the truth sounds so far away from you. But young people, you got to listen to this. Why do I say trust God? Because you have to trust that God wants to do something through you. The Bible clearly says many are called. And that's what this conference is about. We're calling your generation out. We're calling you to step up. We're calling on you to think through things. We're calling on you to stop failing. We're calling on you to make a mark. We're calling on you to hear God. We're calling on you to respond to your generation's calling. But that's not enough, says the Lord your God. God's saying this, don't you know? Matthew 22 and 14, many are called. But only Rosa Parks was chosen. You think someone else heard a voice inside of them say, don't get up? Do you, think somebody, you think, you th do you think someone else was supposed to march and lead a group of people to freedom? Or do you think God only selected Martin Luther King? I want to challenge you this. We're reading about one man, but I wonder how many men de declined it. We're reading about one woman, but I wonder how many other women declined it. And I don't want you to be a generation called to decline your assignment. We want you to be a generation that chose to pick up this COVID-19 and make some changes. Pick up the issues of racism and monuments and debates and presidents and everybody running for president. We're gonna make, we're gonna pick up the country we have left and we're gonna make a difference in Jesus' name. We're gonna pick up our assignment. I'm gonna pick up my, my ethnicity. I'm gonna pick up my, 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 ba my bad past. I'm gonna pick up my, what, carry my cross. That's your ethnicity, that's your culture, that's your income. You're picking up your life's assignment and who are you following? We're all following the same person, Jesus. And if we can stop debating about our differences and step into our diversity and follow Christ, I promise you right now, you will be that generation that experiences power like never before. God wants to take you from being a paper plate and a plastic silverware 
to being a plastic fork or a plastic spoon to being silverware set apart for the master's use. God wants to use you. And I don't care how much doubt that's inside of you. God wants to use you. Do you receive that young person? Do you receive that? Come on, type right now, do you receive that? I know that was a lot for you to grasp, but welcome to day one. <laughs> You're about to get some practical information that's gonna make sense to everything I just said. Let me pray for you. Father, I just thank you for these young people, God. I pray that they heard me. I pray that your word made a difference. I pray for that young person who's in Ghana or Canada or South Africa or all around the world watching or re-watching this right now. And I declare in the name of Jesus that students around the world begin to step into their country, step into their assignment, step into their city, step into their state. They step into what you call them to do to be the best young person you're calling them to be. Father, there's no system that can melt down. There's no economic shutdown that can stop the power of God flowing through us. And I declare in Jesus' name that these young people become inspired. They become strategic and tactical with their life's assignment and make a difference like never before because every generation should experience power in Jesus' name. Listen, if you are a young person who got saved earlier, I want you to know right now we do love you and we have some instructions. I want you to pay attention to them. You might have just logged on. So right now, if you never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to ask you again to repeat after me, okay? Because we want to make sure that you receive Jesus. We want to celebrate you too. So don't do this and not let us know. Please let us know. Repeat after me. Are you ready? Type, I'm ready. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Repeat, repeat me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my past. Lord, I want to be a born again and a new creature in you. I receive my full relationship with the Heavenly Father through Jesus. If you said that, young person, you are are saved to my epic students who are part of our organization please leave an offering let someone know you are blessed go ahead and leave an offering go on to the app give we got some inf information you might be watching this and you want to sow into this conference as well it will be a blessing to us so we can keep on doing the work of the lord